Hello guys, Dr. Cinema. I'm sorry it's been a while since I last posted. I was on spring break, and yes, I know that there are college YouTubers that still post during spring break. But the Wi-Fi at my old house, at my parents' house, seems to be a lot slower than it is right here on college. So I just gotta do this. So, I guess they want to take twice as much long, twice as much time to do something that I can do for basically half of that here. So sorry that I haven't posted like for the past week or so. But I'm gonna post one now because yo you people deserve it. You deserve a little special video. The last the first and last time while the Okay, let me start that part over. Some time ago, I did the Star Wars franchise versus the Lord of the Rings franchise. That was the first time I actually put two film series up against each other. And I'm going to do something similar. The Rocky franchise. All, wait, how many are there? Seven films. And the Terminator franchise. All five of them. That may seem like a very strange team, very strange face-off. But once we get to the final round, I think you guys will be able to understand a little bit more. But for right now, just bear with me for a little bit as we go through the first four rounds. And the first round is story. The Rocky franchise has the first film where little-known Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion, works at as someone who breaks, just like beats up people they don't pay back a loan shark. And he gets offered the chance to fight Apollo Creed in an exhibition game. And so he trains and he fights him. He wins, but he sort of doesn't win. It's a boxing thing. Second Rocky film struggles a little bit with fame and all this attention, but he gets a rematch with Apollo Creed and he undeniably wins. Third Rocky film. A new challenger beats Rocky up he has to re he has to get trained by Apollo Creed who's now his friend he goes back to beat the guy who defeated him and he's a champion again fourth film Apollo Creed dies in the ring against a Russian boxer Ivan Drago and Rocky beats him uses a speech to end the cold war Rocky 5 okay Rocky 5 and 6 are a little bit fuzzy for me uh, struggling with, like, all the head injuries, I think, was sort of, like, the main problem in Rocky V. Rocky VI, which is actually called Rocky Balboa, deals with Rocky, who is managing a restaurant now. His wife, Adrian, died. And Space shows, ends up showing that he isn't completely out of touch with his past life. I think that's how it went. Five and six have been a while. Creed focused the attention on Adonis Creed, the technically bastard son of Apollo Creed. Rocky trains him, and Creed gets into a boxing match. So that's the, the, that's the story of the Rocky franchise so far. The story of the Terminator franchise is very confusing. First film, Robot comes back from the future to try to kill Sarah Connor. Kyle Reese gets sent back by their assistants. To defend Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor lives, Kyle Reese dies, but not before he impregnates Sarah Connor, who ends up giving birth to John Connor later, who becomes the leader of the human resistance against Skynet. That's just the first film. Second film, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Young preteen John Connor teams up with a Terminator, uh, who is sent back for the human resistance this time to protect him from a new updated version of a Terminator and basically stop Judgment Day from happening. This creates a new timeline with Terminator 3. It turns out Judgment Day was just delayed and prepares John Connor for the Skynet launch. Terminator 4, which is Salvation, set in the future, no time travel, where John Connor becomes the leader of the human resistance. Terminator Genesis completely erased all of the other films from 
continuity. Point is, I already spent five minutes just talking about the story. I know, like, I spent, like, the first minute or so just with the whole what's going on thing, spring break. But still, that's, like, four, at least four minutes. So just for the sake of just comprehension and simplicity, I'm giving this to Rocky. Now let's go to round two, the main star. The main star of the Rocky series is Sylvester Stallone. He was basically homeless, homeless before the first Rocky film came out, and he achieved fame and a lot of attention after the release of the first Rocky film. And he plays Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion. He's the underdog. The guy you want to root for. He's got his own charisma and such that you just really enjoy. Hold on. Quenches my thirst. Alright, the main star of the Terminator films is Arnold Schwarzenegger. And... You could really make the argument that he's the main protagonist. I mean, in the first film, he's the an antagonist. Basically, Arnold played the T-800, the Terminator, which is disguised as a regular human in order to kill members of the human resistance. And I say regular because it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's like a bodybuilding champion by the time the first film came out. So, basically, we turned a guy with a heavy Austrian accent, someone who shouldn't be a Hollywood actor, into a Hollywood actor because he plays a killing robot. Michael Bay wishes he did this shit. So, <laughs> as impressive as it is turning someone who shouldn't become an actor into an actor... I'm going to have to give this one to Celeste Stallone of Rocky because he does play in the main protagonist and ends up actually being a mentor in the most recent film, Creed. So, this round goes again to Rocky. Now let's go on to round three, supporting characters. For Rocky, there's Adrian, his wife, Polly. Uh, in the, I think in like the fourth film, there's like his third and fourth, there's like... Rocky's little son. Uh, yeah. And then you've got Apollo Creed. Can't remember the actor's name. God damn it. He pretty much appears in like the first four Rocky films and ends up being the father of Adonis Creed and Creed, of course. So needless to say, there are some supporting characters from the Rocky series that have gotten some attention. However, with the Terminator films... You have John Connor, the leader of the human resistance, but you also have Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor, one of the most badass women of all of action films, as well also as one of the most badass women in film in general. So, so even though James Cameron said some Debatable stuff about Wonder Woman, especially in regards to his character of Sarah Connor. I do have to admit that the other characters from the Terminator series are a little more recognizable and familiar. So, I'll give this round to the Terminator franchise. Now let's go on to the fourth one, Effects in Action. So, Rocky, it's bo their boxing movie. So, there is action, technically. You got the boxing rings and such. But there's really not a whole lot of special effects. Unless you count what the hell that was during the Apollo vs. Drago match in Rocky IV. Point is, they know what to do and they go the simple route, which is a good move for these kinds of films. With Terminator, though, effects and action are everything for this. And Terminator 2 
is considered one of the best sequels of all time because of the way it uses its action scenes, its special effects. I mean, did you see the T-1000, the liquid metal Terminator? That's pretty awesome right there. And while not all CGI will age well, most of the CGI and effects in the Terminator films do tend to still look fairly good, for the most part. So while Rocky films go the simple route, the Terminator films are pretty much known for their action and such. So I'm giving this round to the Terminator films. Alright, 2-2 two two tie. Round 5. The reason why I'm putting these two up against each other. Both of these film franchises pretty much gave fame to their most famous stars. Celeste Stallone, like I said, he was basically homeless before the release of the first Rocky film. He had to sell his dog. After the first Rocky film was released, he went back and actually bought his dog back. And the Rocky films helped Celeste Stallone become one of the most iconic action stars of the 80s and 90s. With Rambo, Demolition Man, and those kinds of films. The Terminator films... Like I mentioned earlier, did a similar thing. Arnold was an immigrant from Austria, and he was a bodybuilder, a pretty famous bodybuilder champion. But no one really thought that due to his like thick accent and everything, he could really become an actor. And while I don't think the Terminator was his first acting gig, it did give him like iconic star status. I mean, he is the Terminator. He became like Stallone, one of the biggest action stars of the 80s and 90s, starring in films like Commando. And I guess Kindergarten Cop, too? Anyway, both of these franchises gave rise to their stars that are attached to them, and they keep coming back. Celeste Stallone has appeared in all the Rocky films, and will return again as a mentor for Adonis Creed in Creed 2 coming out later this year. And filming will is said to begin later this year for Terminator 6 with Arnold once again coming back. Although I think it's in a little bit of a different role, but he's still coming back. And he has pretty much appeared in every Terminator film as well. So, I guess Round 5 is really the impact and the influence it had or in cinema. Like I said, Terminator 2 is considered one of the greatest film sequels of all time, directed by James Cameron, who also directed Aliens, again, one of the greatest sequels of all time. However, Rocky 2 is also one of the greatest sequels of all time, but I guess Rocky 4 could technically be more entertaining, even though it's not technically a good movie. But... The first Rocky film is considered one of the best films ever. Sort of like how The Exorcist and The Godfather have been treated. Though probably not as much attention as The Godfather. But still, point is, the first Rocky film is considered one of the greatest films. Which also gave birth to one of the greatest sequels. Terminator just really has... The one film, Terminator 2, as one of the greatest sequels. Although the first Terminator film is considered an action classic and science fiction classic as well. With a little bit of horror in it too, so I shouldn't really dismiss it so quickly. This is kind of tough. I mean, they both have some really strong parts of their franchise, but they also have their weak points. I'm, you know what, I'm giving this to the Rocky films. Their impact is larger. I mean, there's some of the greatest sports films, some of the greatest films, and they have pointed out more consistently good films. I mean, yes, there's Rocky IV and there's Rocky V, and some people argue Rocky Balboa, the sixth film. But there's also Rocky, Rocky 2, even Rocky 3, and then there's Creed. 
considered one of the best films of 2015, including films like The Force Awakens. Terminator franchise has its good films, especially the first two, though I guess it's really only the first two. Terminator 3 has a little bit of guilty pleasure to it. Salvation is dismissible, while Genesis is just bad. And while I do have faith in Terminator 6, I am going to give the edge and the ultimate win to the Rocky series. So with a score of 3-2, to two, Rocky wins. And like I said, Creed 2 is coming out later this year, with Celeste Stallone and Michael B. Jordan returning, of course. And Terminator 6 will begin filming later this year as well for its 2019 release. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is coming back to that film. Although I think he's not exactly playing a Terminator, but the human that the Terminator T-800 is based off of. Anyway, he's coming back, so, and they're still making movies. So, they're both great film franchises to watch, though, so... There's that, but like I said, win goes to Rocky. So what do you guys think? So I've been gone for a while. Like this video, comment down below with your thoughts. Subscribe, share, Dr. Cinema. See you next time.